In this video we'll continue north on the island of Suderoy and visit one of the most epic locations in the entire Faroe Islands. Also stick around to the end where I'll show you a map I've put together. We'll start close to where we ended in the last video. Just west of the town Vagur, you will find an interesting location I've visited a few times. The area is quite big, so there are plenty of foregrounds to choose from. I find the background cliff wall very intriguing, and I think it works really well as a focal point, especially with the very sharp and vertical end. I have yet to visit this area during sunset, but I bet it will look absolutely stunning with the sunset lighting up the cliff wall. The last location I'll show from Suderoy for now is one you will find in the far north of the island. When you have arrived in the town of Sandvik, you will have to find the road west and follow that all the way to the end. The road turns into a gravel road in the end, so drive with utmost care. The mountain you will end up at is called Gloverberg, and here you will have a fantastic view towards the huge sea stack Asmundastakur. So we have arrived here at Asmundastakur, which is just such a ridiculously big and epic location. And this place is just so, so hard to, to transfer from what I'm seeing right, right here onto a, a, a photo, because this place is just unbelievably huge. And for that reason, I have put on the 200 millimeter and luckily I have Thomas with me, so he has just walked all the way down uh, to the, along the edge. So he can stand there as a tiny speck and then we have this huge sea stack in the background. It looks absolutely incredible, but you really have to play around with the size and perspective here, because else you can't transfer it uh, onto a photo. But with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, I think this will work out. So because of, yeah, it's quite windy here, I have to lower down the tripod quite a lot. As for, for, the, for the tripod and the camera to be stable enough for me to shoot at 200 millimeters. Shooting at 200 millimeters is quite hard with a long exposure, so even though I have image stabilization in the camera, put it on the tripod, take off the image stabilization, and then just put the tripod almost down to the ground. And then I even have to, uh, to use my body as a protective shield for the wind, as for the camera to be as still as possible. Because right now there's simply just not enough light, because I also have to have quite a small aperture to get both Thomas and the background cliff in focus, so I have to shoot at like at least f11, which gives me a ah, well, it's not a long exposure, but it is an exposure time which is about like one tenth, one eighth of a second when I'm shooting at ISO 100. So the thing is, I do come fairly prepared for this one, and I already made that first shot, which I really had envisioned, and it was nice. I have Thomas here right now, we are walking up to a small bridge, the infamous bridge on Suderoy. And I have been here before, but didn't really get that great pictures last time. And the light sure doesn't look too good this time either. So it's a bit sad. 
but it's how it is, that's the fair road. The special thing about Sudoroi is that all the big locations is on the western side, which makes Sudoroi mainly a sunset location. And yeah, we are here for sunset on this tour here, my winter tour here. This is like literally the only time I really want a sunset is down here and it doesn't seem to happen, which is, yeah, typical. Even though I plan and plan and plan, I was like, okay, the best chance of getting something is today. We were supposed to be here yesterday, but I changed. And that was, that was good because yesterday uh, yeah, there weren't any sunsets. So the last chance to get a sunset was today. And even though it looked as if it had the best conditions, it seems the sun will just be snuffed out, which is kind of sad because when this place gets hit by direct light, it's just ridiculously epic. But yeah, you can't win each time, but at least I get some epic pictures from here. <laughs> so we have come all the way to the top up to the bridge and right now the clouds are just coming in which actually kind of makes it really cool now i have thomas down here in the background which looks just unbelievably epic like it's it's so so important to have a human element in there simply just to to give a sense of scale and yeah this this just looks this looks really way better than i had expected so yet again it's so cool to have a vision and actually see that vision fulfilled so there are actually more viewpoints up here behind me but right now the clouds have come in so i do not dare go up there i also think that it wouldn't actually make sense because the clouds are as low as they are. So, uh, well, I got this shot and uh, it turned actually out pretty good. Like clouds came in and gave a lot of atmosphere. So it's actually not as bad as I, as I feared because yeah, the light here is not something to, to write home about. It's not like anything special, but with a bit of atmosphere, I think this can actually turn out to be a really, really cool shot. So, I'm giving it a shot anyway, getting all the way up. Now, the visibility is really bad, but you know, you only need one hole to, to get the shot. So, it's just, it's just too bad that that's such a long way up. I, I'm, I'm not in bad shape, but <laughs> this is hard. So, uh, yet again, you don't get anything if you don't try. You have to be in it to win it. It just proves it again and again and again. So yeah, I walked up here and just a few seconds after I arrived, it just cleared up and I got what I came for. This place is just unbelievably epic. And even though it looks a little bit dangerous from, from afar because of the perspective, uh, it's not really that dangerous up here. Um, of course, always remember some proper boots and so forth. So yeah, I got what I came for and uh, 
Here's the shot. So for anyone interested, I've released this Google My Maps map of all my photography locations, which I've featured in the videos. Each of the locations I show on the maps have either one or several pictures to give some inspiration when you're out there photographing. I have more locations on this map than what I've put in the videos, but for all the locations where I have featured them in the videos, I've also included a link to the video where I talk about the location. I have added a little bit more information at other locations such as Drankanir where I write you have to have a guide and up here at Vidoy there are some rules that seems to change. A lot of things will change here in 2019 so I can't really say how the entrance to the locations are going to be. Keep an eye on visitfaroeislands.com that is probably the best place to start if you want information about different locations which I haven't provided in my videos. If you want to buy the map there is a link down in the description or up in the corner. I really greatly appreciate all the support I get. You can easily integrate this map with Google Maps so you have all the locations in your phone. I've provided a link to the official description on Google on how to do exactly that. So that was it. Thank you so much for watching my Faroe Islands videos. I hope you enjoyed them all and got some inspiration. As always, I'd highly appreciate both a like and a comment.